Welcome to Love and Life's Journey. I'm Chantel. Thank you so much for tuning in. I know I'm a little bit late to the patriotic DIY game, but my husband and I went on vacation. We were gone for a couple of weeks. We went to Florida. We had a great time. Well, it was relaxing and it was much needed. And so we were just really happy we were able to do that. Now we're back and we're back to work and I'm back to doing more DIYs. So today I have three easy budget-friendly DIYs for you. They're all uh, red, white, and blue patriotic themes. So let's jump in and get started. For this first project, I will be using this 11 by 14 inch photo frame from Dollar Tree. I will be using this 9 by 12 canvas board. This one I had picked up from Hobby Lobby, but I believe that you can pick these up at Dollar Tree as well. And I grabbed these two bandanas from Dollar Tree. I will be using the one with the smaller pattern on it. I will also be using a little bit of jute twine as well as one of these packages of nautical rope from Dollar Tree. To start off, I'm going to remove the backing off of this photo frame and take out the glass. I'll just throw away that paper inside and I am going to set the frame and the glass aside for a minute. Then I'm going to use that back piece of the frame as a guide and I'm going to cut a piece of the bandana about an inch and a half to two inches larger all the way around and then I am going to hot glue this all the way around the edges just pulling it tight and um, making sure that my design is nice and straight on the front. Then I'm going to neatly fold the corners of the fabric in and hot glue those down as flat as possible. And now I'm going to use some ivory colored chalk paint by Waverly and do a really heavy dry brushing on this frame. The frame is brown and I want some of that brown to show through so uh, I'm going over this uh, just a really sloppy coat of paint and uh, making this uh, look pretty rustic but uh, I do want some of that brown to show through. After the paint was dry, I gave it a coat of clear matte sealer, and I did a pretty light coat, but there was a little bit of a chemical reaction with this frame, and as you can see, the corners mainly kind of turned this kind of yellowy brown color. At first, I didn't like it, but then I noticed that it kind of matched the brown color that's in the fabric, and so I decided to leave it uh, just because it kind of adds to the rusticness of this. So now I'm going to add my glass back in and then I'm going to add that backing in uh, so that I have that uh, fabric showing through the glass. And here you can see that brown color that kind of goes with that color on the frame. And then you can also see that there is some gray in the background of this fabric. So I am going to take my canvas board and this flat paint brush. I love using these flat paint brushes. Uh, they just are great when you're trying to do uh, some straight line work. And I'm just using a paint stir stick as a guide and I'm going to do some uh, kind of light broken lines to resemble shiplap. Then I'm going to come in and do some lighter lines in between those lines just to give it a little bit more definition and texture. So I found this sheet of window clings at Dollar Tree and they are the same pattern as that fabric I used. And I'm going to be using some of the spray glue also from Dollar Tree to adhere some of these to that canvas. So I'm just going to protect my work surface with some brown craft paper and I'm going to uh, use the window cling that I have chosen and just spray the back with a little bit of this spray glue and then I'm going to position it on the canvas. And this spray glue worked really well for this. I was able to have a little bit of time to kind of reposition it and then I just dabbed off anywhere where there was a little bit too much glue. 
Now I'm going to add this Let Freedom Ring to the top of my canvas and I'm going to do it the same way with the spray glue and then I'm also going to add a few of these little stars. One trick I use to cut down a little bit on the shiny glare of the window clings is to spray it with a light coat of the matte spray as well. And this, it doesn't get rid of the shininess uh, altogether, but it does cut down on it a, a little bit. And now I'm going to position my canvas and use some E6000 as well as some hot glue and just glue this right on top of the glass. Next I'm going to take my jute twine and I'm going to hot glue that all the way around the edge of the canvas. And you just want to make sure that you're getting your hot glue on the canvas and not just the glass because the hot glue will want to just kind of peel up off the glass, but it will stick to the canvas really well. Now I'm going to take my nautical rope and I'm going to start at the lower left hand corner and I'm going to glue the rope up the side of the frame and then when I get to that top left hand corner I'm not going to glue the rope across the top of the frame I'm going to actually leave it loose and I am going to leave some extra rope so that this will be the hanger for my wall decor piece and once I determine how much rope I need for that hanger then I'm going to continue on the right top corner of the frame and continue gluing my rope all the way around the rest of the frame. To finish this off, I am going to take some of that bandana that was left over and I'm going to cut three strips and I'm going to layer them and then just tie them um, just in a knot at the top of my hanger. And then I trimmed mine up a little just to make them a little bit shorter. For my next project, I will also be using some of these window clings from Dollar Tree, as well as two of these tag-shaped Wi-Fi password signs. First, I'm going to remove the hangers and the labels from the back of the signs. And a great tip for getting labels off of things is to use a heat tool or an embossing tool, and I do have links to my favorite crafting tools in the description box below if you want to check those out. This trick saves so much time and frustration. The labels just peel right off. Next I'm going to paint the back of these tag signs with this chalk paint by Rust-Oleum. This is in the color Chiffon Cream. And I just picked this up at Walmart. It was in the aisle with all of the spray paint. I did do a couple of coats of paint on these and I painted the edges as well. Now I'm going to take a little bit of Antique Wax by Waverly and one of these chip brushes from Dollar Tree and I'm going to dry brush on uh, both of the tags and I'm going to uh, go around the edges as well just to define those a little bit more. Now I'm going to take my window clings and I am going to just kind of play around with uh, which ones I want to use and where I want to position them. The nice thing about these is the window clings are repositionable. They're not going to stick uh, by themselves very well on this painted surface. And so I can just play with it until I get it 
um, the way I like it and then I'm going to use that spray glue and I will glue them down. Next I'm going to glue one of the tags on top of the other uh, just uh, overlapping a little bit and at an angle so I'm using some E6000 and then I'll use a little bit of hot glue just to get that to stay in place while the E6000 dries. Now that those are glued together, I'm going to go ahead and paint the back of these tags and I'm going to paint around those little chalkboards. I'm going to give it two coats of the uh, white paint or the chiffon cream colored paint and I'm going to leave the chalkboards and uh, because I decided that you could totally make this reversible and I'm not sure what I want to do with this side so I would love to hear in the comments below what you would put on this side of the sign um, I'm thinking you could maybe do a countdown or uh, something else so I'd love to hear your ideas Next I'm going to use the jute twine and I am going to add a hanger to the sign and so the holes are already in the top of the tags so I'm going to just put some uh, twine through the holes and uh, tie a knot to hold that on and I'm doing this so that it looks nice on both sides of the sign. And you could just leave it just like this, but I decided I wanted to add a little bit of raffia for an embellishment. So I am using this burgundy colored raffia that I picked up at Dollar Tree. I'm using about four or five strands of it, and I'm going to tie just a regular bow and glue that to the top of the hanger. And of course I'll trim that all up and make it nice and neat. Now since I wanted to make this so it was reversible, I decided to add some natural colored raffia in a bow and just making it the same way as I did the burgundy one and add it to the other side. And so I'm gluing that on the back side of my hanger right on top of that burgundy raffia bow. For this last project, I will be using some of this brown shipping paper from Dollar Tree and a little bit of jute twine. This is literally one of the cheapest crafts you'll ever make. It is so inexpensive and if you don't have the craft paper, you could use just a brown paper bag as well. I will put the link to download this pattern in the description box below. Uh, you can use any heart shape. And then I am using some navy blue and some red craft paint as well as that chalk paint in the color chiffon cream. So if you're using my pattern, you're just going to print that out on 8.5 by 11 paper. I used cardstock and cut out that pattern. Then I am folding my brown paper in half and I didn't want to put a crease down the center so I did uh, just kind of a light fold and then place that dotted line down the center of the heart along the folded edge and trace around that and cut that out so that you have a full heart. And then just repeat that so that you get a second heart so you have two hearts the same size. And I will say this brown paper from Dollar Tree is a little bit thin. It is a bit easier to work with thicker paper such as a grocery sack. Here I'm just marking the line that goes below the stars and I am going to mark out this pattern on my brown paper heart and this just needs to be on one of the hearts.
And now I'm going to paint my design on the heart and I am using acrylic craft paint and I am not getting my paintbrush wet. I didn't want uh, there to be too much moisture because this paper was pretty thin and so I didn't want it to get all wrinkly. So I'm using uh, a, not a lot of paint and uh, doing like a heavy dry brush so uh, you actually can see a little bit of the brown paper showing through the paint. And I like this look. I think it adds to the rustic look of this and it's kind of an Americana project so I think it really works. If you don't like that you could certainly wait for the paint to dry and then do a second coat. Next I'm going to paint the red stripes and I did this by color so I did all of the blue then I did all of the red then I let that dry completely before I did the white stripes. And while I was waiting for the red stripes to dry, I went ahead and painted the other heart with the chiffon cream chalk paint. And uh, I did a, uh, a light coat of this with the brown paper showing through on it as well. And now that those red stripes are dry, I'm going to go back and paint the white stripes. So I could not find my star stencil anywhere, so I decided just to draw stars the good old fashioned way on my blue section and then I am just using a small paintbrush to paint those. And I'm also letting a little bit of that blue paint show through the white. So now I'm going to use just a little bit of Elmer's glue uh, to glue the two hearts together and um, I did try to use hot glue at first and learned real quick that that's not a great idea because you cannot reposition your paper if necessary. So the Elmer's glue is nice because it gives you a little bit more time to work with it and get it right in the right place. So I'm going to glue this all the way around the edges except for um, at the very bottom, I'm going to leave that open so that I can add a little bit of filler to the heart. Now you could totally use something like fiber fill um, for this, but since I am keeping this really budget friendly, I am actually going to fill my heart using three Dollar Tree plastic bags. So I am carefully putting these in that opening at the bottom of the heart and then uh, I just used a, like a chopstick to uh, push it down into place and get those where I want it. And uh, I'm not really trying to fill this really full, I'm just trying to add a little bit of dimension to the heart. And then I did seal the opening with a little bit of hot glue. Then I'm going to take some antique wax and I'm going to dry brush both the front and the back of my heart. And then to finish this project off, I'm going to add a jute twine hanger to it as well. I'm taking a piece about oh, 15 inches long or so, dividing it in half and tying a loop at the top and then I am going to put um, each end through uh, some holes that I made in the top of the heart just using a stylus. You could also use a hole punch as well. And then I just added just a little bit of hot glue just to help secure those knots in place. And there you have it, a really easy, very budget friendly, piece of Americana art to hang up for those patriotic holidays or year-round if you'd like. 
If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel to grow. And if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell and set your notifications so that YouTube will notify you when I upload new videos. I will have lots more budget-friendly DIYs to come. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day. Thank you.